we on? Okay, we're on. What's up guys, Dr. Gooda here with the third lecture. Part three of chapter 10, looking at eating disorders. Not a very fun topic, but we do have to talk about it because as strength and conditioning professionals, as sport coaches, we do care about our athletes and we want to be able to tell what are some of the telltale signs of eating disorders, how do we classify them, and what do we do when we encounter that? I'm Dr. Jacob Gooden, professor of kinesiology at Point Loma Nazarene University, and we're in the third part of a three-part series all about nutrition for performance. This comes from the Essentials of Strength Training and Conditioning textbook put out by the NSCA. And so if you're prepping for the CSCS certification test, then this lecture is for you, as well as all of the other lectures linked down below in the CSCS study guide lecture video playlist. So in this lecture specifically, we'll be digging into eating disorders, what are some of the signs and symptoms, and what can you do as a strength and conditioning professional when you encounter them. So let's dive into the material. Now this information comes from chapter 10 of the Essentials textbook. It was written by Marie Spana, who is a registered dietitian. I am not, so take all of what I say, not as a should do as far as diet goes, but as recommendations and me reporting the content that is in this book, because it's outside of my scope of practice. Now, uh, the first eating disorder to talk about is anorexia nervosa. And we probably have all heard of anorexia. However, let's get specific with some of these symptoms. Um, th what it is, is a self-imposed starvation in an effort to lose weight and achieve thinness. So symptoms include not just looking thin, right? You can often have rather ectomorphic looking individuals uh, who genetically are very thin, but in this case, it's a self-imposed starvation that uh, can lead to thinning of the bones, brittle hair and nails, a dry and yellowish uh, skin, like almost like papery thin, uh, yellow to parchment looking, growth of fine hair all over the body, which is called lanugo, and mild anemia, muscle wasting, and weakness. So obviously none of these things are healthy, and the last one especially is not great at all for sport performance. However, unfortunately, oftentimes, body image issues and uh, issues of self-confidence can really get tied up into uh, training and nutrition. Sometimes they're related, sometimes they're completely unrelated. And so unfortunately, we do run into this with our athletes and we want to know what to look out for. Some side effects um, uh, continue here, more side effects, severe constipation, low blood pressure, uh, slowed breathing and pulse, damage to the structure and function of the heart, right? It can get start to get really serious brain damage, multi-organ failure, drop in internal body temperature, which causes the person to feel cold all the time. Oftentimes, people struggling with anorexia, they might always be wearing lots of layers of clothing that are bulky, not only to sort of maybe hide the fact uh, that perhaps other people have told them, hey, like you look kind of thin, do you need help? Maybe they don't want that attention um, but then also because they feel cold all the time. And on top of that, things like uh, low energy, sluggishness, even infertility can result. So yeah, anorexia nervosa, very, uh, very tragic anytime we see a case of this. But with proper counseling and referring out to qualified individuals, uh, hopefully we can get these athletes uh, who are struggling with this some help. Now, the next one to talk about and characterize is the binge eating disorder, which is characterized by repeated episodes occurring at least once a week for a period of three weeks, right? So the, the key here is that it's regular. It's, it's happening consistently. Um, and it, uh, these are episodes of uncontrolled binge eating, uh, eating significantly more food in a short period of time than most people would eat under the same circumstances. Now, being somebody who tends to eat a lot of food all the time, uh, coming from being an, a former endurance athlete and out eating you know, the throwers on the team, and still just having a very high uh, appetite, partly because I'm very physically active, but also partly genetics and partly because, um, you know, I am gaining a little bit of weight and I'm okay with that. Oftentimes people will make fun of me and say that I'm binge eating or something like that. But in this case, it's, it's an uncontrolled uh, response. It's often a, a response to stress or it's a poor relationship with food or anytime you're feeling uh, or the individual is feeling negative emotionally, they're going to turn to food. 
um, and they feel like they can't help themselves and it's consistent, right? So I'm not just talking about if you, if you eat a ton of turkey on Thanksgiving and you just stuff yourself with mashed potatoes and then you also go back for seconds and thirds on the pie. That's just one time a year. I'm talking more about every week for three weeks, at least once per week, and it's something that's consistent. Now, binge eating can be associated with uh, three or more of the following, and then we would say, oh, yep, that's binge eating disorder. Eating more rapidly than normal, eating until feeling uncomfortably full, eating large amounts of food when not feeling physically hungry. So again, it's tied more to other external triggers, not just hunger. Eating alone or feeling embarrassed by how much one is eating. Personally, I identify with, with that, right? I go to like a faculty lunch, I get one or two or sometimes three plates of food, people start giving me like weird sideways glances, and then my fourth plate of food, I'll just take it back to my office so no one has to see me eating that. Um, and, then, and then sadly, the last one, feeling disgusted with oneself, depressed, or very guilty after eating. Individuals who fit into three or more of those oftentimes would be categorized as having a binge eating disorder. Now, this should be differentiated from individuals who are in a massing or bulking or muscle gain phase, especially the latter uh, stages of those phases, because it might look like they are binge eating all the time. And perhaps they have to, because if they already have sizable muscle mass and they're large individuals, they just have to eat a lot. Um, so I'm not talking about those circumstances. I'm talking about when it's more, when it's uncontrolled and unplanned. Next is bulimia nervosa. This is a recurrent consumption of food in amounts significantly greater than normal, followed by episodes of purging. So you're eating a lot, similar to the binge eating disorder, but then you purge it, you vomit it back up, right? So going into the bathroom or you know behind the building or whatever, just in a private place and forcefully causing yourself to regurgitate the food, either so that you don't you know cause yourself to become overweight from it or to make room for the other food that you still wanna eat. So the binging and purging need to occur at least once a week for a period of three months for this to be considered actually full-blown uh, bulimia. People with bulimia nervosa feel a lack of control during these eating episodes, similar to binge eating disorder, but they're also more likely to be of normal weight as opposed to being overweight or obese because they're uh, regurgitating all of those calories oftentimes before they can really be absorbed into the bloodstream. So not all the time, Sometimes binge eating and bulimia sort of go hand in hand and sort of flop back and forth. So it is hard to tell, but oftentimes these individuals can be of a, a more normal body weight. Now, bulimia can lead to the following symptoms, chronically inflamed and sore throat. This is because of all that stomach acid that's being regurgitated up through uh, the throat. Swollen salivary glands in the neck and jaw area, worn tooth enamel, sensitive teeth, decaying teeth, uh, sensitive gums. Again, this is because of all of the the acid and bile that's, that gets uh, regurgitated, acid reflux disorder, other GI problems, intestinal distress, irritation from laxative abuse. Oftentimes bulimia can be accompanied by uh, the abuse of laxatives, again, to try to get all of that food out and to keep a lower body weight while still uh, binge eating, severe dehydration from purging all of those fluids, and electrolyte balance, which would be too low uh, levels of sodium, calcium, potassium, or other minerals, or potentially too high levels of those minerals because we have all of this water loss. Now the next one is um, the avoidant slash restrictive food intake disorder. Now, th now this one is a little bit more uh, rare and less well known. This includes an apparent lack of interest in eating or in food. The avoidance of food based on sensory characteristics of that food, so perhaps somebody uh, I don't know, just doesn't like anything cold or anything that's chewy or anything that is uh, crunchy. And this leads to, to actually eating way too few calories because they just find that unpleasant tactile sensation in a lot of the food that is available to them. There's oftentimes this concern with some of the negative consequences of eating, such as, I don't know, toxins in it or antibiotics that are getting, you know, leaching through into the meat or uh, pesticides that are are on all of the produce nowadays. And so they just avoid food altogether because of uh, all of the potential deleterious effects that they think they might have on their health. When in reality, they're just starving themselves of calories and nutrients by avoiding eating altogether. Then we have uh, Pika. I think that's how you pronounce it. Pika, like Pikachu. Pika uh, is eating non-nutritive substances for a period of at least one month. 
uh, this just means like eating random stuff that's not food. So things like clay, laundry starch, ugh, cigarette butts, hair, chalk. These are all real things that people for some psychological reason uh, have consumed for, for long periods of time. And so this is, this is a disorder that needs help. It, it may not lead to becoming overweight or obese, but definitely could lead to some other negative health consequences. And then we also have rumination disorder. This involves chewing, re-swallowing, or spitting of regurgitated food. So, you know, kind of like a, like a bovine or something where you, you like chew on it a long time, swallow it, regurgitate it, re chew it, and re-swallow it. It sounds gross, but, you know, it's, it's a problem that some people have. So the key point with all of this um, is that the strength and conditioning professional is not responsible for treating eating disorders but instead should be aware of the symptoms associated with an eating disorder and refer athletes to the appropriate professional. So as a strength coach or as a sport coach, as a sports scientist, we care about the well-being of our athletes. We care more about their well-being than their performance, or at least we should. It's not our job to jump in and be this, you know, the savior, the person with the cape on to try to save somebody from an eating disorder or even to point it out. We can instead we can ask questions, we can show them uh, that we do love and care for them and that we, uh, we want their overall holistic health to be more important than athletic performance. And we can bring in qualified individuals, so physicians, sports dietitians, psychologists, sports psychologists, um, to create this blanket of care around the athlete. So through a multidisciplinary approach, we can tackle these, uh, these very serious, potentially serious uh, issues. Yes, to improve sport performance, but ultimately to improve the health and the well-being of our athletes. All right, that wraps up chapter 10. Uh, if you missed the other lectures, you can go back and find them in the strength and conditioning playlist. The next chapter we'll be covering is chapter 11, which is all about ergogenic aids. So I'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, stay strong. And I don't know, I was trying to think of like a closing statement, but yeah, stay strong. That's probably enough. See you guys in the next video. I feel like I have something on my teeth. Mm, this is kind of gross. Okay, that's better. Next is bulimia nervosa.